Well, good morning, everyone. Thanks for coming out to our Advanced Module Manager webinar today. My name is Rod Martin. Uh, we are really glad uh, to have Peter uh, joining us today. This is our second webinar in our series, and uh, thanks for coming out. Uh, Peter is the founder and CEO and president and chief bottle washer at uh, No Number Extensions over there in the Netherlands. It was a joy to meet him last year. So I'm going to introduce him a little bit in just a minute. Just a couple quick uh, housekeeping things, if I could. Next week at 11 a.m. again, uh, we're, we're going to try and be consistent with 11, but Peter couldn't make that this morning. And we figured having Peter was more important than sticking with 11. So but at 11 o'clock Eastern, we'll be looking at Gravity Forms for WordPress. It's a really, really good form builder for WordPress. So if you're interested in WordPress uh, and forms, that'll be a good webinar for you. If you have any questions this morning, please make sure you put them in the question box, not the chat box. And uh, as soon as Peter's done his presentation, we'll open it up for questions. You can ask questions at any point, uh, and we'll uh, throw them up on the screen for him to answer. And uh, we're going to leave lots of time for questions today. So. I'm assuming at this point you're pretty familiar with no number extensions, but if you're not, no number extensions are usually uh, right up there at the top in the popularity scale for Joomla extensions. That's Peter on the screen there. Uh, no number and his uh, his company is called No Number Extensions. Uh, maybe Peter can tell us why he chose that name. My favorite extension that he puts out though is the What Nothing extension, and uh, again maybe he can mention that it costs a euro. Uh, and it's a really interesting little extension. But he has power tools, administrator goodies, front-end coolness, and lots of other things that he can talk about. But today, we're going to focus on the Advanced Module Manager. We released a class on that on Monday of this week. Uh, it's already proven to be pretty popular. Uh, this is probably one of my favorite extensions for Joomla. It's one of the very first things I install on almost every Joomla site I've ever built. And it is, uh, I think, probably the biggest reason I like Advanced Module Manager so much is that it gives you absolute control and flexibility over the modules on your site, which, of course, is really important for customizing your site in so many different ways. So I'm not going to ramble on here anymore. I'm going to turn it over to Peter. Peter, thanks so much for joining us today. And uh, why don't you start off with just maybe a brief introduction of yourself your company, and then let's dive into Advanced Module Manager. Okay. Hi there, everyone. Um, this is a bit weird for me, talking and not hearing anyone's uh, voice back, but I'll do my best. Um, I'm Peter uh, from the Netherlands. Uh, currently, I'm uh, uh, married and have uh, one daughter, and we're getting ready to uh, move house in two weeks, so uh, we're pretty busy. Um, sorry for not making the the eleven o'clock time, um, but it's four o'clock in the afternoon here. Um, my company, No Number. Um, how did it start? Um, well, I started with uh, programming uh, in Joomla. Well, actually in Mambo in two thousand and five, uh, and uh, I saw that Joomla. Uh, lacked a few functionalities that I needed for the websites I was working on. So I started hacking in the core and the next update for Joomla came so I installed the update and all my hacks were gone. So that was the start of uh, lesson number one, don't hack the core. Um, so then I moved on to uh, uh, doing my changes via plugins and that worked pretty well. And within, uh, I think, a year, I had uh, four or five different extensions uh, that I pretty much only used for my own websites that I was making for a client. Um, so then I thought, hey, it, it's cool to give them away. Then I found out there was a whole community. So I needed a little website where I could push my extensions on so people could just download it. And I really didn't want my... Uh, name attached to it or I didn't think that was too important so I uh, I thought the no name uh, brand was okay but of course that was already taken so the next step was no number no number dot nl wasn't taken yet uh, so I took that one and that's about as much uh, thought that 
process that has gone into picking the name. It was simply a free domain. Um, so yeah, by that time I didn't really have any plans for a company whatsoever. But that uh, changed a few years later. Um, my extensions uh, got pretty popular pretty quickly. And uh, within a few years I had uh, like 14, 15 extensions. Um, so uh, then I moved on to having a donation button on my website. That went pretty well. And since two years I've gone uh, commercial uh, and now I have free and pro versions. And I quit my job two years ago to be a full-time extension developer. So that's uh, what I'm doing now for the last two years and uh, enjoying myself very much. Uh, creating extensions uh, not only for myself but for uh, for everyone and uh, yeah I'm, uh, I hope you like them so that's uh, where advanced Ma module manager comes in uh, that's my first uh, uh, well it's not my first extension I think my fifth extension and also that was uh, created because uh, I needed to place an, a module somewhere uh, on a single page and you couldn't really do that with uh, Joomla in the core, except through uh, um, menu items. And so you saw everybody creating menu items uh, just to be able to attach a module to it and then have hidden menus somewhere, and it was a real hassle. And also you couldn't just place a module everywhere except on one page, and that was really a feature I wanted. So those were the... Uh, that was really the first uh, real option uh, that was in my first um, version was to have the ability to um, uh, assign a module to all pages except one or two module uh, menu items, sorry. And then Joomla 2.5 came along and they adapted, uh, adopted that f uh, feature. But by that time, at Fast Module Manager was uh, already pretty extensive. So you can do a lot with a uh, Advanced Module Manager, and um, it's hard to think up uh, examples to show someone because they're pretty site sp uh, specific, and that's also what I like about it. You can just about do anything you want with it, uh, specifically for your site. And um, so I'll just go through some. Uh, some features uh, a bit more in depth than in the videos. Uh, Rod did a great job in showing them. And um, yeah, there's just a couple of things I just want to highlight and then move into the uh, question and answer time so that I can show you what you want to, to see. Um, so yeah, I've got a website here, uh, just a simple website with um, only Advanced Module Manager installed and uh, JCE. I always install JCE before anything else, the editor. So um, what Advanced Module Manager actually does, it uh, it hijacks the module, uh, the core module manager. So you won't see it under the components. Um, you do see my extension manager. I have that installed as well. Um, but it hijacks the link here. and. Um, you get redirected to the advanced module manager instead of the core. Um, well, like in the videos, uh, there's a couple of extra features in the list. I'm not going to go into that again. And here is a little module I made earlier, um, which you can see on the side here. So we'll play around with that one a little bit. OK, so here we're in the uh, module. And here is where all the fun uh, is. In This is the pro version of Advanced Module Manager. And there's the whole list of crazy stuff. I'll just zoom out so you can see the whole, whole list of stuff. Um, and that gets pretty scary pretty quickly, especially for clients that have uh, no idea how Joomla works. Um, so my first uh, advice is to uh, get rid of everything you don't need uh, and don't plan to use via the uh, settings. That was also a 
mentioned in the last uh, video Rod made. Um, so in the options, we'll just go to the options and um, here you see all the options that are in uh, Advanced Module Manager and we'll just throw everything out we're not going to use anyway. I won't go into user groups now and users um, because I'm uh, the only user on this website. Um, let's see, we're not going to play around with geolocation on this website and I only have one template, don't need that. Um, operating systems and browsers, yeah you really only need that and uh, the only good examples I could think of was if you have a shop uh, that has uh, like uh, software uh, then you can like have ads on the side that trigger only a certain group of people like only uh, if you have a version for Windows and a version for OS you can specifically market to that group um, some people requested that so I put it in I don't use it myself um, we'll sh not do anything with components here and tags not using tags and all these third-party stuff um, they won't show up anyway if you don't have it installed so it doesn't really matter if you have it uh, on yes and you don't have it in installed so we'll leave that um, so yeah we'll save this and go back to the assignments now we have uh, still got a lot but it's a lot less uh, a lot less scary um, so yeah, I, I, advise, I, I advise you to do that as soon as you set up the website. Uh, switch everything off, you're not, never going to use anyway. Um, so we have our little module over here and I'm just going to give you a few examples of how you can uh, combine stuff and what you have to look out for. Um, the date functionality is uh, pretty powerful. Um, you also have date in uh, in Joomla since Joomla 2.5 as well. And let's see, what was I going to show you? All right. Um, so yeah, I think this also uh, happened in the uh, was in the video as an example, but I'll show it anyway. Um, if you uh, select anything here, uh, you can set a time or a date. Uh, a from and a to, like say if I want it for, uh, in the, from the 1st of January to uh, the 14th of March and I want to show it on every Sunday for whatever reason then you can do that um, and now it's, uh, you, you really have to uh, when you start combining stuff you have to look at the matching method this is really important um, now I have set it to all which means uh, you have it has to uh, pass this check and then it has to pass this check as well it has to pass all checks um, if I put it to any it's the same way uh, like Google works when you search for and or or if I put it to any then it will pass uh, when the date is between this range and it will also show on every Sunday within and outside that range as well. So you really have to look out for, uh, for what this setting is and what you need and it gets really crazy if you start excluding stuff as well. Um, like if you exclude stuff uh, you don't want to show it between uh, 10 and 11 um, this already gets too complicated to wrap your mind around because you have any so it passes any of these um, but will it now show between 10 and 11 on the Sunday or not and within this time range so if you make it too complicated for yourself I say dumb it down and uh, if necessary just copy the module and make an extra module uh, so you don't have too many assignments within one module especially when you start ex uh, combining exclude and in include um, so that was the pointer I wanted to 
make about combining. Um, and there was a one pro feature I wanted to show you, and that is the extra fields. I think only about three people in the world use this feature. Um, it was also requested by someone, and uh, I really liked it, so I put it in. That's this one. If you show extra fields, uh, you can do some uh, pretty cool stuff with that if you uh, uh, get into the templates. Um, let's say I want uh, a footer, uh, the ability to place a footer in all my modules. If I now save it, Um, now you have a new field here called footer and I'll just put some text in here is a footer now if you save it you'll see that nothing happens nothing happens at all yet and that's because you uh, have to define in the template uh, what you want to do with uh, this field. Um, so we'll just go to, this is an online website, so I'll just FTP uh, the changes. So I'm using the ProStar um, template and the ProStar template already has an HTML override for uh, the modules and that's the one uh, we're going to use. Um, so here I have uh, that modules file. I'll just put it in my editor. And the way you can uh, grab that uh, the text we've put in the extra field is via the extra one, two, three, four and five uh, parameters and you can get that by doing um, footer is, I hope you can see this, is the text too small? Not sure. It's Just. fine, keep going Peter. Okay. Um, in the same way as the module class is called, we'll do this with extra one. And if you have multiple extra fields, they're just one, two, three, four, five. So now we can get a footer, and we'll just copy the same way the header is placed. We'll just do, if there's a footer, then show the footer, and we'll call it page footer. We'll do an H4 instead of an H3. Just to overwrite the file on the website and go back, refresh, and now we have a footer here. Um, of course, in this uh, module, this is an HTML module, so you could pretty much just place the text in the, in the HTML or in the uh, editor field, but this also works on any other module you have that is not, uh, not an HTML. Like if you have a login form without having to uh, muck around with stuff, you can now just place a footer text in there as well. Oh, save as copy, that was not my... Here it is. I saved it as copy instead of saved it. So that's the uh, extra fields um, and let's see. Where's my login form? This one, we'll just delete that one. Um, you can also do this to, uh, to place extra classes to give something an extra class or whatever, or an image or uh, whatever you want. So that's, uh, I think, what I wanted to get into. Um, and I'd really like to hear from you guys what you want uh, me to talk about. So All right, thanks, Peter. Questions? Folks, if you want to put a question in the question box, that would be great.
If there's nothing yet, I can get into PHP assignments as well. Sure. Why don't you do that, Peter? Okay. Um, so PHP, uh, like in the like Rod mentioned in the in the videos, uh, the PHP is pretty scary if you ever did anything with PHP. And I also advise you not to touch this if you uh, don't know what you're doing. Um, but you can do really cool stuff with it. Um, pretty much you can do anything that isn't already uh, an assignment and uh, place it in there. Um, on my website, I've got a PHP assignment guide thingy. It's pretty much hidden away. You get there via a link in the uh, advanced module manager guide in the uh, frequently asked questions, I mean. And there it says, I want to assign it to something that isn't already in there. And there you have a link to the PHP assignment guide. In my new website, I'll put it somewhere more prominently. Um, this lists a few uh, code snippets you could use uh, to do pretty much anything you want. And a lot of this stuff is already um, in, uh, well, this list was a long, lot longer and I took a lot of stuff out because I just implemented this ready to use stuff like the IP addresses. Um, this is now in there and I think I still have that in here as well. So um, this is some cool examples you can do. Uh, like here you can assign uh, modules to the author of the article, so not the uh, the person visiting, but the actual author, uh, email addresses, um, IP ranges, uh, keywords in the page itself. And which one was I going to show? The oh yeah, this one is pretty nice. Um, this is uh, to assign to uh, the amount of visits someone has um, in a new session. So that pretty much means um, in this example, if the person uh, visits the website, he sees the module and the first 10 page loads he has, the module will show and after that it doesn't. So we can just copy that in and paste it in the PHP. And we'll just set it to two uh, visits. Otherwise we'll be refreshing the page uh, too many times. Um, the rest of the stuff is off. Yep. So we'll just save that. Um, we'll need to uh, clear our uh, page sessions. Delete session, please. Okay, page reload. Oh. It's not there. Domain. Oh, didn't click the button. There we go. So here it is. That's the first view. And I'll refresh it another go. And it's there. And on the third, it should disappear. And now it's gone. So that's uh, a nice feature. And that's simply a little bit of code that takes care of that. Um, you can pretty much uh, do anything you want with this. So if you've got a, a third party extension that isn't uh, specifically uh, supported in an advanced module manager, you could uh, ask the developer of that extension if they can provide you with a code snippet for the, uh, for the stuff you want. Most extension developers are uh, fine with that. Um, so, yeah, that's it. Are there already any questions? And it's silent. <laughs> well, perhaps people are just too blown away. Uh, that's a really cool feature. <laughs> I, uh, I, didn't, I didn't even know about the uh, ability to assign it um, by page text. Uh, I hadn't yeah. seen that one. That's really cool when you think about it. So suddenly your modules can be 
can you can have modules appearing for related content based on the text in a page even yeah, yeah. i'm not sure yes. is there any is there any end to the customization for modules that you can't do with advanced module manager well pretty much if it, if you can get to the data then you can play around with it via the PHP. So you can do database lookups and uh, get into the uh, session variables, like the, who the user is and where it comes from. You can pretty much do anything you want. Yeah. Uh, Gilles is asking, what are the top three usages for this extension that you've seen, Peter? Mm, I, I don't know. Uh, that's all, what I said earlier. It's pretty site sp uh, specific how you use it. Um, I think most people still use the menu items for uh, a lot of stuff. Um, and the home page is very popular. Um, I've pretty much put them in order of what people use the most. So the, the home page is used a lot. Um, yeah, Rod explained what the, why that is uh, handy in the video, I think. Um, if you do, a, if you assign a module to the home menu item, uh, that works in most cases. But if you have links on the home page, it carries along the uh, menu ID in the in the URL, which you usually can't see anymore because everybody is using Ceph URLs, but it's there anyway. And then the module still shows up on like uh, featured articles you're linking to. Um, and the home page only uh, shows it on the actual home page. So that's a popular feature. And uh, the different date and time settings are used a lot as well uh, to for marketing uh, purposes mostly. So that's what I think at least. I don't do a lot. I don't do websites anymore. So uh, I, I just have to go by the feedback I get from my forum and stuff and where the most questions are about. Yeah, Jill's asking what I use it for. And uh, Jill, um, actually pretty much the same thing. I've used it a lot on the menu items, the homepage. Um, definitely use the date and time one a lot. I have one client that I know uh, is using um, this particular module. He ha They do... Uh, they do their own meetings kind of things. So rather than just setting it up by dates, uh, they set it up by dates and uh, particular days of the week as well. And that's just, this is really phenomenal what you can do. Another one, if you have an annoying person on your site that keeps coming back, rather than blocking them, you can always assign it by IP address and tell them to go away in a module. I suppose that's a little rude. Um, in Drupal, they have a, a misery module. So it's kind of the same thing where you'll make life miserable for a person, a certain person. <laughs> um, so uh, those are the, those are the main uses that, that I've used it for. Um, the PHP one is new to me. And although I know PHP really well, I hadn't actually thought about messing with it very much, but the ability, uh, just even the ability to, to customize your modules based on page content, that one, really excites me a lot. So I'll be checking that one out. Uh, yeah, the example in this website uh, for the page content, uh, this one grabs the entire um, buffer of the component. Okay. Uh, so that means it, it not only works on articles, but any component you're loading. It awesome. just looks in the, in the complete uh, uh, HTML. Okay. So I'm if you assign it to something like... Uh, a script or something, then it will probably show because there's a probably probably a script somewhere. So don't <laughs> assign it to any keywords that are uh, common in HTML. Right. But yeah, this uh, this should work uh, pretty well. Yeah, I'll I'll add this p this um FAQ to the bottom of the final video in the course. Okay. Uh, I think that page is going to be really helpful. And uh, apologize that I didn't see it ahead of time. So. I think, Jill, for me, you know, the issue here is, wow, what can't I do? And how can I creatively help my clients customize their modules to give them the best bang for the buck? Um, I think one of the frustrations I have, certainly in 
other CMSs is the inability to easily assign these module positions in Drupal, it's blocks and block regions and in, and in WordPress, it's sidebars, and they seem pretty convoluted. This is by far the most elegant solution for customizing the sidebars slash modules slash block regions uh, of all the three CMSs that we teach here at OS Training. So um, I'm really excited to, to be able to uh, share that course with you and have Peter on today.